broadcast live. I'm not hearing any uh, playback while I'm broadcasting from my mic, but uh, there is sound when it is recorded. And if that's the case, I'm not going to be able to do my uh, beer examinations with my groups because I'm not getting any audio pickup. <laughs> All right. Um, the title of this is a recreation of a video I made about three years ago. The title, and I'm drinking a um, Ham's beer, which is not world class, but then on the other hand, it's not at the other extreme horrible, like some people would say. It's just one of those in the middle beers. It's something to drink. <laughs> when you talk about, okay, and I, I had deleted that video. And then I decided, I said, I'll bring it back. It's sort of an interesting concept. When you talk about uh, World War II, we know the main character, really, the, is Adolf Hitler. I mean, if it wasn't for Adolf Hitler, the History Channel practically wouldn't exist, right? <laughs> but people will talk all the time, what was Hitler's biggest mistake in World War II? He shouldn't have done this. He shouldn't have done that. But I'm going to give you my opinion, and I think I can pretty strongly back that up. World War II, the Second World War, can be it can be argued that um, World War II is really World War, the World War Part II. World War I starting July 1914. It's, it basically took a break for um, two decades and then it started up again. Really it started in 1937, we can say, when China was attacked by Japan. Japan never actually declared war on China. They didn't, technically they weren't at war, they were in an incident. <laughs> it was called the incident. But it was an incident that went from 1937 to 1945 and it, the US got involved with it starting in 1940. And then Japan was, in, you know, we got into the war with Japan. Now, uh, we're going to focus on Germany. Adolf Hitler was becoming very popular by 1932, but not super popular. He ran for president against Hindenburg, and he lost 1932. And his party was pretty, his National Socialist Party was pretty violent, and they stir up a lot of trouble. And it became the biggest party in Germany, but they never had a majority, enough to take control of parliament, which is the case in many European countries even today. You have coalitions. But Hindenburg was worried, thought a communist revolution could break out, and uh, the violence was getting out of hand. So he decided, and he had, a, he had extraordinary powers as president of Germany. The president of Germany was very powerful, so he, he had the right to appoint Hitler as Chancellor of Germany. And Chancellor is like Prime Minister of England. And the role of the Chancellor is to carry out the day-to-day -day operations of the government under the authority of the President. In England, you carry the Chancellor would be the manager of the government under the authority of the Queen. Queen Elizabeth's had over 10 Prime Ministers. If you owned a store, you would have a store manager. Okay, that's basically what a prime minister is. They're the manager. They don't have total authority. We don't have a system like that in the United States. The closest we would have to that in the United States would be the uh, Speaker of the House. Anyway, <clears throat> a lot of rigmarole. We're not going to get into all that. But Hitler was able to, after Hindenburg died, he was very old, 88. After he died, Hitler was able to get the Parliament, the Reichstag, to appoint him as president and chancellor. They call that title the Führer, the leader. And then he became very popular in Germany. He was elected president. And there's really no evidence that these elections were really uh, too much rigged. He was very popular. People say, yeah, yeah, we got a guy. He's a nationalist. He's standing up for Germany. He's fighting against different groups who are considered a threat to the uh, integrity of Germany, et cetera. All right. We know all that about Jews and communists and everything. Germany uh, sort of had a big bounce back, similar to the uh, 
New Deal in America, Mussolini kind of started the New Deal programs and the United States and Germany copied that. Uh, but anyway, uh, all these massive government uh, programs to get out of the depression, um, public works programs under uh, Hitler, building highways, bridges, stadiums, uh, theaters for the arts, and also a huge weapons development program, right? So Germany scrapped, the, they renounced the Treaty of Versailles and they began to build a huge army, a strong air force and a good Navy, but not anything close to what the British Commonwealth had, British Empire had. All right, he got away with some things. He was able to remilitarize the Rhineland, 1936. He wasn't attacked. Even the British newspapers made fun of that, said Germany invades itself. 1938, the union with Austria, which is something Germany tried to do in 1919. They both, both countries wanted to do it. Austria was historically a German country, part of Germany, but um, the allies would not allow it. 1938, the vast majority of the Austrian people wanted the union, the Anschluss. The government of Austria did not, but it didn't matter. The German troops entered Austria. Some people said it was an invasion. 90% of the Austrian people thought it was a liberation. They voted to confirm it. No evidence that that election was rigged. So Austria became a German province. A GAU, G-A-U. Now, no, no attack. No one cared if Germany, Germans wanted to live in Germany. No big deal. Then things started to break down because he got greedy. Bohemia and Moravia, which we call the Czech Republic today, historically part of the German, the first German empire, the Holy Roman Empire, the German Confederation, which lasted from 1815 to 1866, he started to make demands that the surrounding edges of Czechoslovakia be returned to Germany because he said that the, the, the Germans who lived there were being discriminated against by the Czechs. The British and the French say, oh, you can't have that territory. We're going to go to war. We're going to take it if we have to. We're going to liberate our people, blah, blah, blah. So the British and the French, they don't want to go to World War One, Part Two. So they sent an investigative commission to Czechoslovakia, and they checked the situation out, and they got angry at the Czechs because they said, damn, Germany's saying you're mistreating the, the Czech, the Germans living in Czechia. Come to find out, you really are. The Czechs actually were discriminating and treating the people bad. They weren't really willing to go to war over this. Uh, the Soviets were willing to team up with Great Britain and France, but they were making so many outlandish demands that the British and French said, well, no, I mean, we're not going to let you have Eastern Europe. So they told Hitler, well, look, all right, you can have the, uh, the Czech area, the German areas of Czechoslovakia. And the Czechs couldn't really do anything about it. What are they going to do, fight Germany on their own? They're not going to get any help. So they had to give in. The British Prime Minister Chamberlain said, I would like you to sign a document that says we, the German and British people, agree to never go to war against each other to settle our problems. Hitler said, sure, I'll sign it. He never wanted to go to war with Great Britain anyway. So, all right, he got really, and then he was able to annex Mamel, historic German city from Lithuania. So the, Germany was in great shape uh, in September, I mean, in 1939. They made a big mistake, though. In March 1939, they got greedy and invaded um, Bohemia and Moravia, and uh, all the goodwill that Hitler had built up the previous year came crashing down, and now the British and French are looking at Hitler as just a bad guy. They said, he's bad like we figured. No more deals, no more deals. Hitler got like a gambler in a casino. You can't stop gambling. They, they keep winning, and they think they're going to keep winning. You're not going to keep winning. Okay, but he says, uh, all right, to Poland. I want those areas in Poland that separate East Prussia from the rest of Germany. I want, I demand that I be allowed to build highways and railroad through the Polish corridor, this little area here. Um, okay, see that little area? Now, in retrospect, maybe the Poles should have let them have it. Okay, you can have these highways and don't give them a pretext. And, uh, but the Poles 
had a treaty with the British and French that if they ever got attacked, the British and French would jump in and help them. The British and French say, Lord, what are we going to do? All right, they don't want to go to war over Poland, but they don't want to look foolish having this treaty that they can't back up. They go to the Soviets. What do you say about um, jumping in and helping us fight the Germans? And the Soviet Union says, sure, let's do it. Uh, all we want is this huge amount of territory in Eastern Europe, more than Hitler wants. And the British and French say, oh, forget that. Meanwhile, Hitler in Germany had been negotiating with the Soviets, and they worked out their own deal where they decided, hell, you can have a lot of this territory, and we'll split Poland in half. You can have the historic parts of Poland that were Russian, which is still controlled by uh, Belarus today and Ukraine, and we'll take Western Poland. That was a secret treaty. That was the secret part. The open part of the treaty was they were going to have a non-aggression pact and be trading partners. The British and French would say, oh, no, we're in trouble. So they started leaning on Poland. You know what? Maybe you should <laughs> let the Germans have those highways and that railroad. And the Poles foolishly, in a way, said, no, 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 you have a treaty. You're going to help us. If we get attacked, you're going to help us. How could they really help them? <laughs> They're over there on west in the western side of Europe. Hitler's thinking, I can go in and take it. What are the British and French going to do? They don't have the Soviets on their side. They're on my side now, or at least they're neutralized. I can do what I want. And the British and the French are going to have to just take it, deal with it. Tough. He invades, the Germans invade September 1st, 1939. The British and the French say, look, we have a treaty obligation. We're going to go to war with you if you don't get out of Poland. Hitler says, you know, two middle fingers to you, I'm getting what I want. What are you going to do, fight me in the Soviet Union? Now, Stalin was very clever. You see, this, this is a very important part of this. Poland was going to be divided up. The Soviet Union was going to get the eastern part. But as part of the agreement, the Soviet troops were not going to enter Poland until two weeks after the German invasion. Basically, Stalin say, I'll let you have all the glory. But it was more than that. It was basically, I'm going to let you attack then the British and the French can declare a war on you. Then I'll hang back. And after everything's kind of like in an uproar there and all the Western European countries are fighting each other, Germany, France, Great Britain, and maybe Italy, bombing each other up, then I'll come in and snatch Eastern Poland and say that I'm doing it for security reasons, whatever. And that's exactly what Russia did. The Germans invade, the Russians come in, two weeks later invade, they didn't call it an invasion. They said they were entering Poland for security considerations but it was all part of the secret treaty with Germany. So the Soviet Union was not, they did not get a declaration of war on them from Great Britain and France. Okay, let's go on with the story. Hitler says to the British and the French, oh, well, I've got Poland. They got defeated in a few weeks. You didn't do anything to help them, not that they really could, although I think they could have if they launched, if they had launched air raids on Germany immediately and set up a blockade of Germany immediately and started to um, destroy German uh, port facilities. Germany might have had a real problem invading Poland and the Soviets might have turned on Germany very quickly. But they didn't, they were timid, they, were, uh, they didn't know what to do. So Hitler says after the attack on Poland and Poland surrenders, he tells the uh, British and the French, well, Let's just call this war off. You haven't bombed us. We haven't bombed you. There's been a little naval action in the water, but it hasn't been much. Very few people killed. Let's just pretend World War II is over with and call it even. And the British and the French say, you don't understand. No more deals, especially the British. They're kind of leaning on the French. No more deals. No more deals. You have to give up Poland. And Hitler said, oh, well, you know, screw you. And uh, so then... It got very bad. The British and the French put a blockade on Germany trying to squeeze them. The blockade wasn't, a very, wasn't very effective like it was in World War I because the Russians were giving Germany everything they wanted. So they have a huge trading partner to the east. The Soviets are not necessarily a German ally, but they are a partner. So they're getting all the supplies they need. They don't care. But uh, then we know the uh, attack on Denmark and Norway occurred because Germany was worried that the blockade would be put right there in the uh, channel, separating Norway from Denmark. And the Germans said, no, we've got to have Norway, which will give us this huge ocean front 
to break the blockade, and the British and French are thinking we have to stop them from setting up this thing. So Great Britain and France and the Germans were both coming at Denmark and Norway, and it was a question of who was going to invade first. And the Norwegians and the Danish, their attitude was we don't want to get invaded from anybody. It didn't matter. Hitler lost his cool and, 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 and attacked first in April 1940. Pouring into Denmark and Norway, the British did send British and French sent troops in, but it failed, and they were booted out, and the Germans occupied those two countries until May 1945. Continuing on, the British are told, the Germans tell the British again, well, let's call it off, forget it, you know, it's over. And they say, no, no, no way. So Hitler had a plan, and we know it was a brilliant plan to invade France. He knew that the British and the French would, if he invented, if he, he knew that if he went into, um, if he sent troops into Belgium, that the British and the French would rush their forces to the front lines, right to the front lines to fight. Okay. No problem. Because when they rushed their troops to the front lines, he, he knew, and the German high command knew that the Arden Forest, which is around Luxembourg, southern Belgium, Luxembourg, northeastern France, it's very dense woods, mountains, hills, uh, rivers, valleys, canyons, you know, little canyons or crevasses, whatever. Uh, no one would ever dream of trying to get to there. How would you get to there? You'd have to have bicycles, basically, and little inflatable boats. Well, that's exactly what the Germans did. The British and the French and the Belgians go up to the front, and the whole German army comes through there with very mobile forces, bicycles, inflatable rafts, and everything, and they come underneath the Allies and behind them to the seat, and the Allies are trapped. There's German army in the front and German army in the back, and that's when everything broke down. France collapsed. The British are telling the French, fight on, fight on, don't give up. Meanwhile, we're gonna pull all our troops and our planes out, you know, you're on your own, but keep fighting, don't give up. And that was a disaster. France surrendered, and then the British attacked the French Navy because they demanded the French turn their Navy over to Great Britain, they said never, and then that, it was a big chaos. Well, anyway, we know that we know the situation. France was out of the war, under the clamps of Germany. Half of France occupied, but not the French colonies and not southern France. Still have a semi-independent government. <clears throat> Germany once again tells the British, "Okay, you've been uh, rolling the dice and you've been losing every time. So about time to call the war off, right?" Churchill, who's in power now, says, hell no, we're fighting to the end. You give up. Hitler says, are you crazy? So he had a plan. He wanted to invade Great Britain and knock them out the war. They launched a massive air attacks on Great Britain, the war, you know, the Battle of Britain, which failed. So when Germany was unable to establish air superiority, they could not launch a naval invasion of Great Britain because then all their ships would be sunk by British air superiority. Now, at this point, it's very important, very important. At this point, 1940, when the Germans are so caught up in this war with France and Great Britain, and of course, Italy jumped in, and that's another video I'm going to make. Italy jumped in in June 1940 when France finally collapsed Italy, the cowards that they were. They weren't going to jump in in 1939 when they thought Germany would lose, but when they think Germany's won the war, then they jumped in to their disastrous regret you know that a year later they're pulling their hair out why oh why, why did we do this hitler told spain why don't you jump in franco said i don't think so but i appreciate the offer he, he figured you're gonna get beat all right here's the very important part at this point and it looks like germany's got it won they don't win they lose the battle of britain the air war over britain they can't invade great britain so now it breaks down into a stalemate the British Navy controlling the sea. The Germans can't break the blockade. The British Navy, the British government, more and more drawing the United States into the war. Or I should say the United States allowing itself to be drawn into the war. Something Germany definitely did not want because they knew that was a guaranteed loss if the United States jumped in. As things developed in 1940 in the West with the big war with France, Great Britain, and Germany, Hitler noticed in the East that his partner, his partner, Stalin, was acting in a very impertinent way. <laughs> uh, seems to be that Stalin kind of like uh, uh, forgot about the deal. Um, 
the prices that the Soviets were charging for all the supplies seemed to escalate, <laughs> um, taking advantage of them. And then all these demands that the Soviets were making on Germany were considered outrageous. The, the, the Russians attacked Finland, which Hitler was, Finland? Finland was a historic German ally. What is this? They invaded Estonia and Lithuania. Uh, I'm sorry, Latvia. And Lithuania. And that's, this was really bad because Lithuania was considered German sphere of influence. The Germans tell the Soviets, oh, what's going on? Then the Soviets invaded Romania and took Bessarabia and um, uh, Bukovina, two territories from the Romanians a strong German ally, and the worst part about it for Germany was that most of the oil came from the Romanian oil fields. And then the Soviets started to pile up millions of troops, tanks, planes along the German border and the Romanian border. They had already attacked Finland, a German friend. Where are 90% of Germany's troops at the end of 1940? Are they in the West fighting Great Britain? No, they're on the East guarding Germany against an invasion from their so-called friend, the Soviet Union. So the Germans realize, oh my Lord, we've been played like a fool. The Soviets wanted us to get into a big war with the Western allies and we get wrapped up in that and they can just clean up and take everything they want in the East. I mean, it was pretty obvious what was happening. Then uh, the uh, ridiculous Mussolini and the, the Axis powers had no kind of organization, really. They're off doing their own thing. Italy's off doing their own thing. They're going to invade British East Africa, which Germany had no interest in. And, of course, eventually Italy, Italy can't even control their own territories in Africa. When the, when the British counterattacked in Africa, the, who, do they, who do the Italians beg for help? Hitler, help us. We're getting killed. Hitler said, oh, Lord. I really don't have time for this. What does he do? You have to send the Africa Corps down to Libya to fight the British in a stalemate. They're not strong enough to take over Egypt. The British not strong enough to take over Libya. But this is a waste of time and money for Germany. They get no benefit from it. So look at the situation as 1940 begins. They've got troops down or about to go down into Africa, achieving nothing. They're going to you know, send troops in 1941 into Africa to help their ridiculous ally, Italy. They're in a stalemate in the West with Great Britain. They're not strong enough to beat Great Britain. Britain is certainly not strong enough to beat them, but they're wasting time and money. And then the greatest threat, their ally or their friend, their partner, the Soviet Union, Stalin, has millions and millions of troops along the eastern border in a very menacing posture. Now, people have looked at this situation and what they've discovered through historical analysis is that these Soviet troops were not digging in and setting up defenses. They had no forts built no fortifications to protect themselves from a German invasion. No, but rather, they seemed to have an offensive posture. It was as though the Soviet troops were arrayed in, a, in, in, in such a way as to invade po uh, Western Poland and Germany and Hungary and Romania at any moment. It gets worse. Italy, in their ridiculous way, in their nincompoop way, if you want to use a German term, decide they're going to invade Greece. No consultation with Germany at all. Mussolini decides we're invading Greece. Why? No reason. Just going to invade them. Only one little problem. The Greeks started winning and beating the fool out of the Italians. Italy's in retreat back to the Italian territories. Who does Mussolini call for help? Call to for help? We well, you know who it is. Germany. Help us, help us. We're getting beat again. Hitler says, damn nation, this guy. What kind of ally is Italy? They basically lose all the time and you have to run and help them. That's right. That's what kind of ally you have. So Germany tells Yugoslavia, look, we got a real problem here. Um, we're going to have to send troops through, through your country to go help this nitwit Mussolini fight the Greeks who he's losing to. Now, the government of Yugoslavia said, oh, OK, got no problem with that. Go ahead. Only one problem. Most of the Yugoslavian people of various ethnic groups didn't like the idea. And there was a revolution immediately when they found out about the friendship treaty with Germany. And they overthrew the government of Germany and set up an anti-German government, an anti-German government in 1941. And they said, no, you're not sending any troops into this country. 
And the interesting, the more interesting thing is that immediately upon that, the Soviet newspapers and the Soviet government congratulated the Yugoslavians for their revolution and setting up an anti-German government. Openly did this. Hitler just blew a fuse. He had already had a meeting in late 1940 with the Soviet uh, Molotov, the uh, foreign uh, minister, and he had he he, he asked a uh, 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 Molotov, what's going on? I don't understand. We're supposed to be partners, right? You've got all these troops built up on our, you know, massing on our border. I mean, it doesn't take a, a child could figure this out. You can look at a map and see that at any moment we could be invaded by the Soviet Union, right? Why don't you go invade India if you want to, you know, uh, hurt Great Britain? You could take India without any effort. And, you know, what is going on? I, you, you know, he was like hysterical, like he was in a panic. And Molotov was very uh, kind of disrespectful. He said, well, we're not interested in India. And he, and he made this statement to Hitler. He said, the Soviet Union's interests lie in Europe. Europe. Hitler said, oh, okay. And then the same night they're having the meeting, the British launched a bombing raid on Berlin to embarrass Hitler. And, and Molotov and Hitler and all of them had to run down into a bomb shelter. <laughs> And Hitler said, oh, anyway, he tried to give an implied threat to Molotov. He said, just remember, you know, we're winning this war. You know, we're winning this war, meaning don't screw with us. We could come after you. And Molotov very, you know, flippantly said, uh, well, if, if you're winning this war, why are we in this bomb shelter? And whose planes are up there bombing this city? Hitler said, okay, all right. Well, thank you for the meeting. You know, I'm glad we could talk this out, uh, whatever. Bye. He flipped out after that. I mean, he just couldn't handle it. Uh, he told he told the jet, this guy has a terrible attitude and it's pretty obvious what's going on. These guys got a spot of short hairs, you know what I mean? Sorry to use that expression, but that's basically what he was saying. We're in trouble. We're in big trouble now. We're in this stalemate with Great Britain in Europe and in Africa. We've got this nitwit ally Italy who can't get fight their way out of a wet paper bag. We have the Soviet Union massing troops along the border. They're grabbing territory from our allies in our face, openly. And then we're having a meeting and they're kind of like laughing in our face. That's it. He told the German high command, that's it. We got no choice. Either we're going to hit them first or they're going to hit us. And we, can't wait around, we cannot wait around to get hit. So we're going to hit them. And he formulated a plan. We're going to hit them June 22nd, 1940. One. For various reasons, we don't have time to go into that, but they determined that June 22nd, 1941 at 4 a.m., I believe it was in the morning, we're going to hit the Soviet Union in the greatest attack, land attack in the history of, in, in the history of the world, world history, which it, it was. British intelligence being what it was, though, found out about it. Seemed like the British have the best spies in the world. They probably could tell you what Hitler was going to eat for breakfast every morning before he ate breakfast. But anyway, uh, they told the Soviet Union, look, uh, just letting you know, Soviet Union, I mean, you know, we're just letting you know the Germans are going to invade you June 22nd, 1941, about four in the morning, so you better get ready. Now, Stalin said, yeah, right. He figured that's just a plot by the British to draw him into the war because they couldn't beat Germany. He said, yeah, all right, and, uh, you know, whatever. But he didn't really believe it. He didn't think the Germans were going to attack. But from historical analysis, it seems like the Soviets or stockpiling troops, planes, tanks, millions of men along the, you know, whatever, armaments along the border so that they can invade Germany and their allies at the time of their choice, choosing. Whenever the Soviets were ready to come in and swoop up and grab the prize, they were going to do it. The Germans were especially friendly throughout the spring of 1941 delivering everything they needed to give to the Soviets on time, having meetings, being maybe even overly polite. <laughs> Soviets never picked up on that. You know, that's kind of unusual behavior. Um, never could see what was coming, but uh, sure enough, just like the British predicted, here comes the biggest invasion in the history of the world. This massive German, Romanian, Hungarian, Finnish, Finland jumped in to get their land back, attack on the Soviet Union which failed, as we know. For the first few months, the Germans were able to drive the Soviet troops back, 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 capture lots of men because they weren't ready. But then a whole lot more got away. 
Japan did not jump into the war like Hitler predicted. He thought Japan was going to jump in when they joined the Axis powers to help Germany fight the Soviet Union. But their treaty, you see, I'll say the Axis were very disorganized. You see, they wouldn't even, they knew the British were spying on them all the time, so they were very careful of what they said in public. So when they signed their Axis agreement, all it said was if Jan Japan or Germany goes to war with a third party, a third party, then the one of the other countries will jump in to help. Well, when the Germans said a third party, they meant Soviet Union, Russia. But when Japan was looking at the treaty and it said a third party, they meant the United States. And you know who they, each other was talking about. They just would work on implications, like what you would imply that the other guy meant or what you hope they picked up on what you meant. So they didn't get Japan's help. Now, if they would have gotten Japan's help, they might have defeated the Soviet Union. But the Soviets pulled most of their troops back. The German attack every day that went by was progressing at a slower rate. So by December 1941, their attack had ground to a halt. And that was it. I mean, that was really it. They got caught up in a stalemate in Eastern, you know, in, in Eastern Europe, in Russia, the plains of Russia, and they were chopping each other apart. The Soviets and the Germans were chopping each other apart over the next three years, 41, 42, 43, 44. Meanwhile, the United States started to send weapons to the Soviet Union and, and other supplies. The United States, Hitler, in his own warped sense of loyalty, he did have a warped sense of loyalty. When Japan attacked the United States in December 1941, which the Germans were not expecting, Hitler said, well, we promised, we promised we're going to help them if they attack. So three days later, they declare war in the United States which they were already at war with the U.S. anyway. I mean, it was just a formal declaration. The Germans in the U.S. were already fighting a naval war, undeclared naval war. But he formalized it, which the British were very happy about because now they're going to get even more open help from the United States. And we know the rest of the story. Uh, Hitler did have some great ideas in military, you know, in some military uh, ap um, considerations like the uh, Case Yellow, the invasion of France. Brilliant. No one had ever thought of that. That was his, that was his baby. He came up with that. The uh, offensive in the Ardennes Forest in 1944, the Battle of the Bulge, that was his baby. Also, he developed that basically on his own. I mean, he had help, helped develop in the plans, but it was his idea. It failed, but it was a brilliant idea, and it, it caught the Allies totally off guard. It failed. You know, that failed, too. I mean, it may not fail. Hit, that failed. The, the attack on France didn't. Uh, the massive attack on the Soviet Union was basically his idea. But on the other hand, Adolf Hitler was not trained in military academy. He had contempt for military principles. He could never grasp the concept of retreat, tactical retreat. He wouldn't listen to advice. He thought he knew everything. And you know how these people are that think they know everything. You can't talk to them. So things broke down pretty fast. And uh, basically, Germany went from defeat to defeat. And by the middle of 1943, they were down and out. I mean, they weren't out, but they were down. And they were going to lose every battle from now on, basically. And we know the rest of the story. They were destroyed and they lost the war. Okay, so you asked, what's the biggest mistake Hitler made in the war? Was it invading France? Was it invading uh, Norway and Denmark? Was it invading the Soviet Union? Was it whatever? Was it this or that? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, the biggest mistake Germany made, the biggest mistake Hitler made in World War II was going to World War II, getting involved in World War II. Because in 1939, Germany was not on top of the world, but they were close. They had a strong economy, one of the most uh, industrialized countries in the world. Now, of course, we don't agree with their national socialist government. You know, we're not into dictatorships here in America. That's their business, though. But anyway, Germany could do what they want. But, but you know, factoring that out, they had a modern country, um, the most, one of the most educated populaces in the world, national unity, essentially, and it wasn't because of dictatorship. Most Germans openly supported Hitler. They weren't forced to. A lot of people had this illusion that the Germans were somehow held captive by the National Socialists. They were not. In fact, most Germans supported the Hitler government until the last, very da last days of the war. So in that sense, it was a democratic government because most people did choose support the government to their own dismay. Great educational system, some of the best technology in the world, a strong military Navy army. They're in a bad position, stuck in the middle of Europe, surrounded by enemies, but they could have, there was no reason to go to war. 
1939, let's go 10 years later, 1949, Hitler could have still been in power. By this time, Germany would have, of course, developed uh, atomic weapons. In the 50s, they would have developed nuclear weapons. Why go, why go to a world war to get a, a, a couple of roads and a railroad? They could have gotten this through Poland. Eventually, the British were not going to forever go to war to protect Poland. They could have gotten this through negotiation. Even if five, six, seven years would have passed and the British and the, and the Germans would have invaded that corner of Poland and a fait accompli and, gra and grabbed that land, no one was going to go to war to fight over that strip of land. That's not going to happen. But Hitler being who he was, a hothead, uh, a militarist like so many world leaders are, they think they're going to solve their problems through war. And look what it got them. There's the fun destruction. So the lesson of this video is Hitler's biggest mistake in World War II was getting involved in World War II. He chose it. It's on him. Too bad for him. You know, this is not about regret or sympathy or anything. This is just about my opinion. His biggest mistake in World War II was going and getting involved in World War II. Thank you for watching this video production. I'd be curious to see what you think about this topic. And then the next video I'm going to make is about Italy joining World War II, and then we'll go on to other historical, geographic, and political topics.